Well, it's festival time here in Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach favorite son, Pharrell Williams, is back with something in the water. It's been a four-year hiatus since 2018, but everyone is excited. This weekend, so many wonderful things are happening, but is that it? I'm going to talk about the lasting impact of Pharrell Williams and something in the water. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. We'll be right back in just a minute. Welcome back. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. We want to thank you again for joining us on this beautiful Sunday, which we're enjoying here. It's a little wet this weekend uh, here in Hampton Roads. For all of you that are listening across our TuneIn app, we want to thank you also for joining us. And thank you again for your support, for all that you do for WNSB Hot 91, the soul of VA. And as we broadcast from every Sunday, as we do from this great institution, the Norfolk State University, we thank all of the Spartan Nation, all of our all, all of our administrators, faculty, staff, friends, for supporting everything that happens on this campus. I tell it, I say it all the time. We've got the best alumni, the best supporters around the world for the largest and baddest and biggest HBCU here in the Commonwealth and the best in the nation. As always, we have our producer in studio, Marvin Folks, also known as DJ Scandalous. You can hear him every day on this air every Monday through Friday from 2 to 6 p.m. and also on Saturday. And yes, on Sunday, he is the hardest working man in radio. And most of you know he's also a Ph.D. student, (laughs) get his Ph.D. in computer science, cybersecurity. So he's not only ripping it up on the wheels of steel, but he's also doing it in the classroom as well. We're fortunate to have him. Look, Today I want to talk about, this is a phenomenal weekend that we're having here in Hampton Roads. Virginia Beach's favorite son, Pharrell Williams, and Norfolk State's very own Pharrell Williams, has brought back something in the water. And true, it is something in the water here in Virginia. The amount of talent we have here, the amount of opportunities that we have here, great military infrastructure, education infrastructure, uh, the, the great cities, seven cities that we have here. I mean, it's just something in the water about Virginia. Scandalous, look, you've been here all your life. You're born and raised here. You're a phenomenal talent. You're a recording artist. You're a producer for Teddy Riley. What is it about this in, in, in the VA? Listen, it is truly something in the water, and it's been like this as far as I can remember when I first started with music when I was like 12 years old, uh, back in the early 2000s, decades ago. Man, I feel like I'm, I'm aging, but I remember when I was in a rap group before I became a solo artist in uh, my rap group, uh, we were called the Roadrunners, and we were fortunate enough to have a few songs produced by Teddy Riley, and um, that's when he also found out about my talents as being a producer when I was just 13 years old. And I remember one time my group, uh, we went down to the ocean front. And as we was down the ocean front walking and just enjoying ourselves, we see this guy standing out this club. It used to be called Lagoons. <laughs> and, um, you know, we weren't there at the club or anything. We were just, you know, young teenagers walking the strip. And we see this yellow trucker hat from afar. And lo and behold, it was Pharrell Williams. And I was about 13 or 14 at the time. And that was my first time uh, meeting Pharrell. Uh, my group, we had our CD on us. We gave it to him, and he gave us the spill on how he was working with two new artists, The Clips and Ludacris. Mm. And at that time, they were new artists. And he was explaining to us how uh, he just produced some songs for them wow. for the first time or whatnot. And they were getting ready to, you know, uh, be broadcasted out there to the world. And, you know, so fast forward, literally 20 years later, when I look back at that moment, I say, man, you know, look how far we've come. Uh, from that moment to for meeting Pharrell Williams at such a young age at the oceanfront to him putting on a festival at the oceanfront. So it, it really is something here in the water. It's a lot of talented people. And um, being here at Norfolk State yeah. is a blessing. It, it has helped to um, nourish and, and nurture more talent here. And um, DJ Scandalous, as far as me being a DJ, was born really right here on Hot 91 as far as being a person that knew how to blend. I always messed around with DJing, and I DJed as a teenager, but I did not learn how to actually blend music together until I got on air right here at Hot 91, and that's thanks to Norfolk State. (laughs) 
you know, again, this is a place where we see the future in you. But that's a phenomenal story. You know, we we talk a lot. And just to hear that, I think that's the first time I've heard that story yes. <laughs> that you tell me. But you never know about an encounter. Who are you going to meet and the opportunity that will present itself? And like you said, that was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, literally. Of course, we all know who Ludacris is. Luda and also the Clips, uh, those acts. And and for those of you that don't know his rap career, Ludacris, and his DJ career in Atlanta, you know, his movie career. You know, yes, <laughs> the Fast and Furious uh, series. So, but with that, now fast forward twenty years, he's bringing not only those acts, but the biggest acts in music to the VA. What yes. does that mean for this area? That means a lot. We get to witness and get inspired. There are a lot of there's a lot of talent here, and I remember you know going back to working with Teddy as a teenager. Um, you know, he would always tell me stories how, you know, when he first came here, there was there was no music scene. He said he moved here because um, he's from New York. He's from Harlem. And he wanted to be able to really settle down with his kids and his family um, in a less busier type of city. So mm-hmm. that's what made him come here to Virginia Beach and the water. He said he liked the water. And Virginia Beach was like Miami before Miami. That's what a lot of the people say back wow. there from the 90s. And ironically, his studio, Future Records, was just a two minute walk from Princess Anne High School where Pharrell went to high school at. Wow. So that's how Pharrell was founded just by his studio. Think of it as think of it as the student center here at Norfolk State and the library. It's that walk. That's it. That's how far the studio was. So um, you know, to to be able to witness, you know, acts like a Jay Z. Yeah. Um Busta Rhymes, Snoop Dogg, Charlie Wilson, P. Diddy, Usher, Usher, Missy, Timberland, all these people that Pharrell put on one stage at one time in one one weekend, it, it gave Virginia the, the opportunity to be able to dream bigger, to see that, man, it can be done and it can be done right here. The argument here with Virginians is you can't make it here in Virginia, but that's not true. You can make it here. It's all about your network. And it's all about making sure that you're making the best type of product or music, whichever type of business that you're in, Mm -hmm. that you're really applying yourself. And Pharrell has proven that. Um, Pharrell has been all over the world, and now he's bringing it back. And it's making it, it's giving the artists an opportunity to be able to get their self out there. If you go down there to something in the water, even if you're not performing on some of the local stages, you get to network and meet people that you probably would have never met. Yeah, that's true. So... It's an awesome, it's an awesome opportunity, and it means a lot for this area because before we had something in the water, we had this festival called Afram Fest, and Afram Fest uh, started in the '80s, and it was only R&B acts, only R&B. Well, fast forward, I think it was like 23, 23 years later, 2006. Yeah. Um, I was honored enough to become the first rapper to perform at Afram Fest. Now, I got the numbers uh, as far as the attendance for Afram Fest, and they told me that Afram would garner in 300,000 people a weekend. Wow. So pretty much at any given time, it's forty to 50,000 50, people, people at one time. And I was blessed to be able to perform on stage in front of that many people back then. But unfortunately, um, Afram Fest you know, stopped. It was no more after about 2008. They tried to bring it back, I think, 2010 or 11, and it was on a smaller scale. It used to be a Town Point Park in Waterside. Um, so that was the the biggest thing that this area has really seen, but it wasn't a conglomerate of all of these huge acts. It were, there were big R&B acts, yeah. maybe five to eight of them, not literally 50 plus more that are on this stage here for something in the water. Yeah. You know, from young to old to rap to rock to gospel to pop to R and B. I mean, you just Pharrell. He he just outdid himself, and it's huge for us. Yeah, he's bringing everybody. But you know what, Norfolk State, which he this is his university, his adopted university. He talks about listening to the band, uh, which he said inspired him to pursue music the way he did, and we made him an honorary band member. Brought him to tears when he was a commencement speaker here just a year and a half ago. And uh, and also became an honorary doctor for the university, and definitely uh, one that values the he sees the value in what we see. Yes, you know, but we're not just bystanders. You know, we hosted 
you know, after 2018, the city shunned, you know, something in the water, the pandemic hit. You know, Norfolk State was the only entity that was stand by him. That's right. And we hosted That's right. Elephant in the Room. That's right. And we talked about the issues about, and we're going to talk about this in just a moment, uh, but we talked about the issues that we have here as it relates to equity and equitable opportunity when it comes to bringing festivals and business and so forth. So that was the catalyst. You know, and our president, the uh, Dr. J, uh, was uh, uh, able to open it up, you know, with, with Pharrell and so forth, and it was just a phenomenal opportunity. I was fortunate enough to serve on a panel uh, to discuss how politics and power and profits all come together and how we as a people can actually come together and rise above it and actually break that cycle. And then from there, you took it to D.C. Again, Dr. J and myself was able to go to D.C. in 2022 uh, to talk about some of these same issues uh, in last summer. And then the mighty dream came in October uh, here in Norfolk. In that particular piece, uh, again, Norfolk State, the band, sit front and center, President Do- Dr. J, President Javon Adams, yes, once again was able to open it up. You know, so he values what Norfolk State brings to the table and values the wisdom and, 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 and advice and guidance from our president and values what we see here. You know, so he gets it and he gets VA, he gets his home. You know, he talks about, there's a news article I'm going to reference uh, from uh, 13 News Now. He says, if you got 757 in your blood, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Bringing opportunities back, coming back, and making it happen. Speaking of making it happen, you know, WNSB is just not uh, broadcasting music or commercials, but we're involved. Tell us a little bit very quickly about what we're doing, what you're doing down at the festival this year. So down at the festival... I took place with the R&B Block Party, um, DJ B, who has the morning show here. Yes. Um, he was with the R&B Block Party. Listen, and tune in to the morning show. It phenomenal. It is the best morning show Phenomenal. <laughs> and, you know, I DJed uh, at the R&B Block Party. Um, just just phenomenal opportunity. Um, you know, Fam Lay, who's a, a, a great friend of Pharrell, his business partner as well, and also from right here from Norfolk, you know, he was a part of – the R&B block party and making this happen and um, Hot 91 we're just honored to be a part of it and yeah something in the water is just really great it's, it has seminars and, and discussion panels it's not just about music Pharrell understands the educational piece yes. with entertainment and just with the 757 alone what we need here other than just music because even with the Mighty Dream Forum they gave away money yes over two million dollars you know, to businesses and, and a lot of those students, uh, a lot of those businesses uh, were former students and alum of Norfolk right. State University. So it's just really some of my former students. Awesome. <laughs> you know, it was, it was phenomenal. You know, we were fortunate enough to be there to yes, witness to witness it. Two point five million dollars going to black ambition. As a matter of fact, some of the proceeds from this weekend, something in the water uh, will benefit black ambition to produce more and help produce more black entrepreneurs and minority and women entrepreneurs, and also to Yellow, his nonprofit school, in which he has created for, uh, to abolish certain things and and to create certain things. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. This weekend, there's something in the water here in VA. Our favorite son, Virginia Beach's favorite son, Norfolk State's favorite son, and our good friend, Pharrell Williams, is here this weekend. We've had a phenomenal Friday. The rain stopped at us a little bit Friday, but phenomenal Saturday, uh, which DJ Scandal is here, DJ the block party, uh, down the RB block party, and then also here today, Sunday, pop up church was happening. We got Kurt Franklin, uh, so many other, other stars that are here, gospel stars, and other acts. It is is a phenomenal weekend. Discussion panels, tables, uh, businesses involved, vendors, the whole nine. It is something in the water here. You know, I want to talk about the lasting impact. You know, this this is our community impact series that I'm that I'm hosting the month of April and May on this particular show. And we're talking about people and organizations that are making an impact in the community. And I think this is you know, to talk about 
uh, Pharrell and what he's doing, his impact that he's making in the community, I think is tremendous. You know, it's just not the music festival itself. You know, but again, we talked about this multi, but he's got other multi-million dollar developments that are coming on. You know, according to the article by 13 News Now, you know, he believes again that if you have 757 in your blood, in your body, this is what you should be doing. And again, bringing opportunities here to this area. Let me talk about a couple of these opportunities that he's, that he is bringing to the area. I'll start with the nonprofit he created. According to 13 News Now, Yellow in, in the city of Norfolk, according to their website, their goal is to cultivate a community of critically conscious thinkers who see themselves and the world through the lens of possibility. Through the lens of possibility. That is a, tr- to, first of all, that's a, that is a way of creating hope. Hope that people can see themselves not as you see them or someone else sees them, but as they see themselves as change agents. Imagine a a student, a kid, a child coming into a system like that that says, hey, I believe that I can make a difference because I am the difference maker in not just my home, not just within myself, not just in my community or my school or my city or my state, but in the world. That gives our youth not a hand out, but a hand up to let them know that they are the future of our society. Now, according to the site, they said that they do this through the ecosystem of five intersecting priorities. Abolish remedial, revolutionize teaching, nourish the youth, inspire entrepreneurship, and enlist communities. Now, of course, you know, all of these uh, areas and the way that they do these things, uh, that they uh, create this ecosystem. You know, of course, as educators, we know that we go through different different cycles. Of course, we know that you look at different pedagogies, the way that you teach, the way that you guide, the way that you research information. So we know that his yellow, this nonprofit, is going to create opportunities through this ecosystem, through their five intersecting ways in order to impact the community. And it's going to take time. But again, the foundation, the foundation itself, I believe, is the most important. Cultivating a community of critically thinking, conscious thinkers who see themselves and the world through the lens of possibility. All of us need to see ourselves and the world in our in just our immediate area through a lens of possibility. I always like to say it's not about what you see now, but it's about what can be later. So hats off to uh, Pharrell for the nonprofit uh, Yellow and what they're setting out to do their work. And I know some of the people there uh, who are uh, a part of this, and it's just tremendous, tremendous to have them uh, to be a part of it. Now, in addition to that, we talked about Mighty Dream. Mighty Dream was the Economic Growth Forum, uh, which was also held in the city of Norfolk. And I want to make a statement here. He's just not putting things here in Virginia Beach, but he's putting things across the seven cities, across the seven cities to uh, Norfolk, across Virginia Beach, and he's going to spread out even further. But the city of Norfolk has been a great benefactor of these initiatives that he's had. The Mighty Dream Forum was an economic forum. We talked about earlier how, you know, ambitious students in undergrad, straight out of undergrad, some older, some established, but they came to this forum, did a pitch, and was awarded between 50000 to, I think it was a half million dollars top prize, 100000 250, 200000 and 100000 and then the rest received, some received $5,000 as well for start, startup funds, but $2.5 million, $2.5 million awarded to business owners, entrepreneurs. Tell me, if you're an entrepreneur, what could 5, 15, 25, 50, 100,000, 200,000, a half million dollars do for you? That's the impact that he's making in the lives of entrepreneurs. Now, 
the city of Norfolk, they said they couldn't tell what the economic impact was at that particular time and how many people attended, but all the ticket events were sold out. And the city only chipped in 150000 to actually host the event. And like I said before, the Mighty Dream Forum was a forerunner. Uh, well, it was the, it's, it's the forum in which Elephant in the Room was the forerunner that the city, that Norfolk State hosted on this campus. When everyone else shunned him, Norfolk State embraced him, and he's never forgotten it as well. Not only that, but there are two other multi-million dollar projects that are in the works. There's a $335 million Atlantic Park project, according to this article, uh, coming up that has been approved in the city of Virginia Beach. The oceanfront site is going to house an amphitheater, surf park, stores, restaurants, residential units. As a matter of fact, according to its estimates, the economic impact is expected to be $26 million per year, as well as creating more than 100 new jobs and $4.4 million in wages. Absolutely amazing. So this place is really going to pay for itself in a very, very short time and continue to make more and more and more money and opportunity revenue for the city, for the region, and ho- and hopefully change the lives of people. Now, how much is the city putting into the project? They're putting in $140 million. So once again, just a fraction of what it's going to cost to build it, but the revenue that it will generate over and over again will be 10, 20, 30 times more, maybe even than in, in our lifetime. So once again, a major multi-million dollar project that will benefit the city, the region, and the people. Not only that, but also here, once again, in the city of Norfolk, we have a re- redevelopment of Military Circle Mall here in the city. Now, according to the article, all signs do point toward Pharrell Williams closing in on that deal. This particular area to be revitalized is going to be a wellness circle, an arena for entertainment, a green path, offices, retail, and restaurant spaces. Now, the project itself, we're not, it's a little, the projections are not in, but the total project investment will be more than $1 billion. Now, we know that there's been a lot of uh, uh, groups that were seeking uh, the contract in order to be a part of this redevelopment. We also know there are some high-profile some high individuals who are part of groups in order to be a part of it. Uh, so this is something that's going to be big, huge, huge for the city of Norfolk, and we're excited uh, to have that come about. But not just that, but we're also looking at the we're also looking at the something in the water festival, something in the water festival itself. Now, the city does admit it had a rocky history. And as I talked and mentioned before, they're shunning. It was shunned. It came in 2019. And when it came in 2019. Um, these businesses <laughs> were not expected. This was not on the list. Keep in mind, every tourist city, everybody has. Uh, festivals that are on the books, things that you know are coming in every single year. It's happening every year. You know it's coming. comes every four years, every two years, whatever the case may be. Well, this wasn't on the list, but it brought in $22.8 million to the city and $14.5 million of that went directly to businesses. So this is something that wasn't on the books at all for tourism, but it generated almost $23 million to the city of Virginia Beach. And businesses in that area got almost $15 million of it. And the city only spent, once again, a fraction, $1.18 million to host the festival. The, uh, the ability to see the world through a lens of possibility. I see now with the foundation of his nonprofit where it came from, the possibility. Now, of course, the Virginia Beach uh, uh, City Council, they voted to, once they brought it back, they voted to put in $2 million in reserve uh, to be spent on the festival. However, that doesn't, uh, they, 
they haven't spent all of it. We don't know where it's all going, but we know that a lot of it is going toward, uh, that went toward security in this particular area. But we do know that, again, COVID shut down the festival uh, in 2020, 2021. Then it was moved back to D.C. in 2022, where President Dr. J and I were fortunate enough to travel, uh, to be a part of that forum there in D.C. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, And we know that the decision came after uh, Pharrell to move it, after Pharrell uh, described as toxic energy, the city after the fallout of the death of his cousin, Donovan Lynch, uh, who was shot and killed in Virginia Beach by a police officer mistakenly in 2021. And we know that um, Donovan Lynch's father is an alum uh, of Norfolk State. Uh, we also know that here at the university, they host a Reimagine America Forum every year. Uh, and I've been fortunate enough to help facilitate uh, some of it and moderate the very first one uh, and host it uh, here on the campus. So we're very excited again to be a part of the change that's happening here in the city, in the region, and more importantly, for the impact of our community and our people but you know he just didn't stop there but you know Pharrell's also been named the Louis Vuitton new men's creative director Uh, he's releasing his new line of clothing the human race uh, which is here uh, at the festival so if you haven't and the festival is still going on so if you haven't been able to go down to the beachfront go down enjoy it Uh, but this will not be the end of it because what I do see is at the festival, it just wasn't hip-hop artists, it wasn't um, middle-aged people, but it was young people, it was older people, it was churchgoers at the pop-up church, it was African-Americans, white, Asian-Americans, Hispanics, it was every nationality in the world that exists here in in the city, and and people coming from outside of the city, outside of the state, here. He is brought together. His impact, I believe, lasting impact, would not just be financial, but it's changing the face of this region and changing how we interact together as one. One of the major, major change agents of our time is none other than our native son, Virginia Beach's native son, Pharrell Williams. We wish him the best in all that he's doing. And again, Hampton Roads itself is lucky to have him and have what he's doing here for us in this area. (laughs) Well, you hear the music, so you know it's time for us to end. You know, we are here to bring movers, shakers, and policymakers to you to discuss issues important to the community. There's no other issue more important than when we have our very own someone who's from this area come here to want to make change. Until next time, be well, God bless, and be great. We'll see you next week.